We are cutting out this stained glass window today, showing all the secrets and techniques of a lifelong stained glass artist. At the end of the video, this is the stage that we will be. And so now without further ado, let's get to pulling some glass. Here we have a nice mix of translucent and opaque glass to really make that bumblebee stand out within the honeycomb. This is a bumblebee within a honeycomb, so we're going to want some rich ambers and golds, and of course black and yellow for the bee's body. We'll get our glass cutter started by oiling it up with a container filled with oil and a sponge. You'll know that it's saturated when you roll it on a paper and it leaves behind some oil lines. I like to number my glass corresponding to my pattern to make sure I don't mix them up, but when you have more glasses in a single window, you'll need to create a legend that indicates the name of the glass and the corresponding number on the pattern. Sometimes our stained glass windows can have 25 to 50 colors in them. We'll be starting with the number six glass. We're going to measure out the exact width of our honeycomb hexagon shape so that we get a good yield out of our glass. You're going to want it to line up perfectly with the inside of the lines. So here we have two edges pre-cut since we measured it. Now we'll use our glass cutter and the straight edge as a guide to cut perfectly straight lines on the other edges. When the line is very short, I typically freehand cut these because it is a little bit harder to align the straight edge perfectly on such a small line. I typically break the glass with my hand so I can avoid grabbing another tool to save just a little bit of time. But if you need to use grosiers or running pliers, be sure to do it. Glass is sharp, so be sure not to injure your hands. Keep your table brush handy to keep the pattern clean, people. You do not want these shards of glass splintered into your hands. After cutting a piece, mark your template so you know which pieces you've cut. After the pieces are cut, I typically consolidate them into a box so I know which ones I've already done. Now you'll notice that whenever I am cutting on a pattern, I prefer to cut by pushing forward instead of pulling towards me. This is because you need to see the shape of the line that you're trying to match in front of you. And you can't really see properly if your hand holding the scoring tool is obstructing your vision. Now, this piece is probably the toughest piece of the entire pattern. That's why I'm doing each score individually so that I can get it to fit as well as possible. If you try to do too many scores on your piece before breaking any off, it could move and it won't be as obvious until it's too late. I am using the score of the reservoir on the glass cutter to tap the score through the glass. I tried, and I tried, and I tried. And ultimately, I decided I should use the grosiers. First, I am trying to pull the glass apart just enough to get the score to run through fully. Not quite hard enough to break it out though. Then I decided to start grosiering out the center until there was a large enough void I could pivot out the pieces. In the end, it worked perfectly. Now there's nothing too special here, so we are going to go ahead and speed through this part. All the same lessons of using a straight edge as a guide with consistent pressure, breaking techniques using your hands, glass cutter, and grosing pliers, and of course measuring the width to cut down a piece to a manageable size to get a good yield. You will have to play with your pieces a little bit to try to get the best yield possible to waste as little glass as possible. And I actually cut this one slightly off, that's why I kept checking it. No biggie. Here is another complicated cut piece with a few free hand cuts. This time we are demonstrating scoring the entire piece before breaking off any parts. It's a little tricky to hold the glass in the exact same position, but certainly not impossible. This little trick can save you some time, so it is a good idea to go ahead and practice it. This is a bit of an awkward angle for your wrist, so it could be difficult, especially for a beginner to do this type of cut. If you have to, break off your existing scores and simply rotate the pattern so you can get a less awkward angle for your wrist. Make sure to keep the cutter 90 degrees from the surface of the glass for the best results. Again, we're trying to use our straight edge as often as possible to keep those lines perfect. We'll break these pieces off with our grosiers and into the trash. This tiny curved piece will require a few taps. I'll do light pulls with the grossing pliers until that score is fully ran through. That's why you'll see me pulling little by little, switching the position that I am pulling on the glass. Once that score opens up, it just pops right off. Comment down below what you do with your scrap glass instead of throwing it away. Now this light amber, we are going to demonstrate cutting multiple pieces out of a single piece of glass. Again, using a cutoff piece measured to be the correct width so that we have two edges pre-cut, we will begin further cutting down the straight lines. You can strategically plan out how you will be scoring the glass, so after doing the first score, you can do the next score right up to the initial one and keep yourself from overcutting it and wasting glass. This piece has multiple freehand cuts, again pushing the cutter away from us just inside of the line so that we can see where we are cutting. We'll keep consistent pressure and are sure not to lift our cutter. 
Once you start the score, you need to continue it on. If you have to lift to get a comfortable scoring position, run the cutter off into a direction that will not mess up the piece you're trying to cut. Copper foil is not as forgiving as lead, but there is some leeway in the cut. So don't get terribly caught up on cutting every piece 100% perfectly. We'll see later on where we can check everything once it's all cut and recut the pieces if needed. With this cutoff, we're making a straight edge so we can use it elsewhere. I'll normally do the bigger pieces first so I can use the cutoffs for the smaller pieces. Just a little glass saving tip. Here we are switching to another up close angle so you can see exactly how the scoring wheel should be oriented when cutting the glass. You can see the scoring wheel is just inside the black line. Not quite on it, just barely inside. I'll often use my free hand index finger to help stabilize my glass cutter when I am first setting it. I find that I have a lot more control getting the perfect starting point instead of my cutter hand trying to float down the mark on the pattern. When doing free hand cuts, you're going to want to move your elbow. That's how you're able to keep the scoring tool under control. You can try to do it with your wrist, but it's just not as stable and tires you out much quicker. It was my elbow that tapped the close-up camera. That's because you really have to keep rotating that elbow whenever doing these curved cuts, especially with the tighter radius. Again, using the offhand index finger to get the perfect starting point, and then we'll be continuing the cut with consistent and even pressure. We'll check the fit of our pieces before moving on, because the more work you do now to make sure these pieces fit well, the easier off it will be later on. We'll continue on with these lighter amber pieces. If you're enjoying this video and want to keep learning, subscribe because we have a few more follow-up videos on all the ins and outs that you need to know to create this stained glass window after all the glass is cut. Here's a nice close-up of an ideal situation for the grossing pliers. With the flat edge, you can use it to break glass and especially these very long and narrow pieces. For these, the running pliers are simply too wide and your hands will have no chance of getting a good grip onto this piece, so you're really forced to use pliers. Now this piece was a bit of a troublemaker for me. I tried my usual tapping and it failed the first time. I used the cutoff for another shot and this time I try to take it just a little bit slower. Working that score by starting at one end and working it through to where the scoring line terminates. This time it worked out just right. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Einstein's definition of insanity, but it goes something like insanity is doing the same thing over and over yet expecting a different result. So if it doesn't work the first time, try something a little bit different, okay? The glass for the wings is a special glass called iridescent glass. You'll notice it has a bit of a rainbow hue. Between the rainbow hue and the texture of the glass, it makes for the perfect wings for insects like bumblebees and dragonflies. You'll notice that I drew some lines in the glass and arrows on the pattern. This is to indicate the direction I want the texture to face. The texture has a nice direction that really lends itself well to contributing to the overall effect of these insect wings. And you'll notice the directional texture on several glass types. Try not to overlook it as it can be a very useful tool to depict different effects, like water flowing a certain direction. The color of the pattern in the glass can also give an illusion of something like a horizontal sky. Sometimes with these curved cuts, I'll support the cutter head with my index finger around the bend to help keep it right on track and nicely perpendicular to the glass. Textured glass is another variable that can be underestimated or used in a less than ideal way. Some textures really contribute well to the different effects, like leaves in a tree or shrubs.
We are going to cut up a spare pattern to get the templates to trace on our pieces for the yellow and black glass. This panel is going to be a copper foil, so I prefer to use scissors so that my joints are very tight. If you have too much space between your pieces, you'll end up with very wide solder lines, which is kind of hard to notice, but it's simply not ideal. Using the scissors, we'll have pieces that fit tightly within our pattern to get some nice, even solder lines. Once we have all of our pieces cut out of our pattern, we're ready to start tracing. Now, the bumblebee's body is made of yellow and black glass. For the yellow pieces, we can use a black Sharpie, and it's a pretty simple process. Keep the paper secured with your finger and trace the perimeter. Now, I have seen some individuals use stronger paper, like manila folder paper or poster board. I've even seen some glue down the cutout paper pieces so that you don't have to trace the perimeter with a marker. This is really only necessary if you plan on making the same design many times. For this black glass, we won't be able to see with black ink. So instead, we're gonna be using the silver Sharpie. This is the main reason why it's important to have a few colors to mark with. Once we are done tracing the glass, we need to begin scoring on the inside of the line. If you go outside, you'll need to grosier or grind down the pieces so it fits properly within the pattern. When I score trace pieces, I normally do all the scoring at once, then all the breaking. I find it to be a little bit faster this way to batch these actions. We've got all our pieces cut now, so we'll place them on the pattern, but we're not quite done yet. We need to check everything over and make any fine adjustments that are still needed on the grinder. Normally, I'll look over and if there are still any marks from the original tracing, we'll need to grind those off because we know these pieces are oversized from the original patterns. After all the original lines are cleaned up, I'll look over one last time to see if I need to do any additional marks and grind those down. Now that all of our glass is fitting together perfectly, we can move on to the next step. Check out our next video where we will begin going over all the tools, techniques, and materials for copper foiling stained glass. Then after that video, we'll continue on the tutorial on how to complete this stained glass window. Thanks for watching. Buzz.